Hey guys, me again today. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, a slight interesting repair to do today. And uh, just a spoiler, it's actually not about this guy. Um, despite this being in front of the camera right now, I'll tell you what's going on. So I have a customer coming as I as we speak right now. He's going to drop off a... Uh, he's going to hand over to me a uh, power supply for a uh, fancy... Uh, speaker i forgot what the name is called but i'll put the name in the title of this video it's a fancy uh speaker that's designed in the uk or whatever basically looks like a big zeppelin i forgot the name but uh something and wilkins uh i forgot the name but anyway so the reason why this is here is because i have to extract these three capacitors right here these are 2200 microfarad 10 volt electrolytic caps and uh the customer wants me just to uh, replace the three caps in his power supply with a uh, good one so we're putting these ones in his power supply so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this and uh i'm going to take these uh three 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 caps here out of here and i'm going to test them quickly with my uh, usr meter i have it here off to the side and uh they should be good because they're pretty good quality ones i think they're nikicon caps but uh these are okay for the replace as replacements they are rated for 105 degrees and they are 2200 microfarad at rate 10 volts so i'm gonna basically take these out quickly right now this is just like kind of a scrap board that i use for parts and uh, i actually got it uh, with these two caps missing so these are like the big main filters they someone else took these already but um anything else that might be good for me in the future like these two transistors here these are uh on semi transistors if they're not uh if they're not uh blown or whatever the two tw uh n60 s5 and yeah, two basic, I think they're NPM transistors, but anyways, uh, parts, it's good for uh, taking stuff from it, so uh, I'm going to be stealing these three caps today, and uh, when the board comes in, I'm going to resume the video, and uh, and I'm going to basically swap the bad ones on that board with uh, these good ones here, so let's get started. Okay, so before I actually uh, show the next clip, I thought I would want to show you guys actually one of these tools that I have that I got not too, too long ago. This is a, uh, as the title says, as the title here says, it says uh, multifunction tester. So basically what this guy is, it uses a uh, ZIF socket um, with a bunch of uh, numbers and whatnot. And basically what you can do with this thing is you can uh, use it to test a variety of components like uh, capacitors, uh, transistors actually. So uh, I'm going to give you actually a quick demonstration on exactly how that works. So I'm going to be testing my... Uh, my caps here, for example. So these are the ones that I uh, pulled from that uh, power supply you saw in that last clip. So uh, there's this white goo here. This is just glue, and I tried to take it off here, and it peeled a bit of the uh, the uh, siding of this cap. But uh, otherwise, it's not damaged. It's not uh, punctured or anything like that. So I'm not scared. I'm going to be using them, and uh, I'm going to show you how this works now with the uh, the tester. So I'm going to just you take one at random, and I'm going to hook it up, and I'm going to show you you guys what. Uh, what this tester can do you know so so i have my uh just one of the caps i have it hooked up and uh polarity doesn't matter it could be either side and you can put it in i have for example the positive side is on uh number one and the negative side is on number two but it really doesn't matter if you flip it around it will still work very fine uh, very uh, very good uh this is just a, a zip socket for those who don't know what this is so you can basically put ic's and stuff you know in there that uh fits so i have just these two leads here with some uh clamps on them or whatever so i just hit the start button and see what it says here we go so it knows it's a cap and it says 2286 microfarad it gives even an esr reading which is very very nice to have 0.62 and uh the loss on the uh on the original reading i guess i think that's what this is referring to so these are supposed to be uh 2200 microfarad at uh, 105 degrees so let's see if i can show you right there rubicon 10 volt 2200 microfarad and uh if i run this again because it turns off automatically I'll show you what it says and i have it hooked up as you see 2,285, so it's it's within spec and it has a relatively low ESR rating, 0 0.69. And I do have my uh, my other ESR meter, which is this guy right here. This is just an ESR meter. 
for that cap, 2,200, which they don't have. So let's go between 1,000 and 4,700. Uh, for 10 volts, eh, it, uh, it says uh, 0 0.69 over here. And here they're saying 0 0.12, 0 0.23. But I think that um, for 2,200 microfarad, despite this saying 0 0.23 and 0 0.12, I think that cap, this cap is still good. I don't think it's actually uh, kaput, uh, whatever. So, and we'll even test it with the power supply and put it in and you'll see that it's going to work just fine. So maybe this one, the ESR reading is not so accurate, but the capacitance reading is accurate. And I'll tell you what, actually, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put that cap in here and I'm going to use this tester now just to show uh, what the, um, what the reading is here on it. So here I have the uh, cap hooked up, and on this one, supposedly the uh, polarity matters, so I have the, uh, the negative lead, as you see, I have it going to the negative side, and I have the uh, positive side of the cap going to the positive side, and we are reading negative 0 0.099, so 0 0.1, give or take 0.1 ohm, so given on this sheet 0.1, yeah, it's within spec. This cap is good, as I said. So maybe this tester, I, I have both testers, you know? So this is really just a dedicated ESR meter. This one is more like a general purpose, you know, kind of thing. So I'm not surprised that it doesn't give uh, exact, precise results. It gives you, you know, a rough idea. But even if it was 0 0.6, and I know people, you know, you should, you, people say you should follow this uh, table right here. But um, as long as it's not like two ohms, three, four ohms or whatever, then, uh, <clears throat> then it should work for the uh, purpose that it's going to be serving so but anyhow we know it's good because we've read that it said 2200 something microfarads and this one is telling us our esr value is 0.1 so this cap is good so i'm going to just quickly look at the other two but i'm pretty certain those two are good as well so uh yeah we're gonna wait for the uh i'm waiting in the meantime i'm waiting for the uh customer to hand me over the board and when the board is in i'm going to uh show you how that looks like okay so here's the board and uh yeah it's a little tiny switch mode power supply and uh, the reason why it has this little funky design to it is because this speaker the entire speaker is like a zeppelin kind of looking weird thingy but uh, as you can see we can see right off the bat these three caps right here they are bulged they are no good so if you look from the side, we're going to do a little wobbly dance test that, like we did on the uh, inverter. Um, yeah, they are no good. They have to be replaced. So regardless of testing it or not, these are going to be replaced because as soon as they start puffing up like this over here, yeah, as soon as they start puffing up, we we have to replace them, you know. So compared to these ones, these are all nice and flat. But uh, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to attach uh, my... Uh, suicidal cord and i'm gonna plug it into my uh I, I auto transformer isolation transformer dim bulb and we're gonna test this actually before and after and i'm gonna see and i'm gonna probably notice that i'm missing some voltages on the uh, secondary side so i'm just gonna solder my uh, wires to the uh, connector it runs on 120 volts uh and yeah we should be good to go so uh let's go ahead and uh, start doing some testing quickly with our uh wire and then we're going to replace these three caps okay so the uh, power supply is powered up and i'm going to show you what i've seen now so i have it on dc volts all the pins are reading zero except for this one i believe if i'm not mistaken yes so this one is reading 5.07 volts so this looks like it's our it's our um this is our standby pin so our standby voltage is there 5.07 volts but the uh the problem could be that with these caps, when there's a load, because right now there's not really a load. This power supply, I don't think this is meant to be always on. I think this is, a, since it's a switching power supply, it will be on or off. I don't have any information on pinout, so I'm not going to run the risk to uh, test this and possibly damage something. Um, like Because I know with typical, uh, as you've seen in my other videos, with typical uh, switchable power supplies, you can just... Uh, uh, short a couple of pins and the uh, power supply will turn on it's pretty i'm pretty certain it's the same thing over here with this guy but uh since i don't have any information with these uh these pins uh i'm not going to risk it uh, and 
possibly short something by accident and damage something even if i have it on the uh, dim bulb and isolation and auto transformer setup here but uh so far like i said once again we see we do have a standby which is a five volt which would make sense uh and i'm guessing the issue with this power supply is what's happening when it does turn on um the uh there is the output is i think it might be still very low so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change those three caps out now uh we're gonna re-put everything we're gonna pretty much come back here and we're gonna test again and we're gonna see if we see any changes uh in our results but uh, i don't think we're gonna see any changes so yeah let's start by doing that okay so we're back um the three caps have been replaced so one two three and unfortunately it looks like the rest are completely bad um I just uh, started testing the board and I pulled this guy out and I'm reading like 2 or 3 ohms on the SR meter and this is a 220, what is this, uh, my camera's not focusing, it's a 220 at uh, 25 volts so that should not read worse than 0.23 and I'm getting like 2 or 3 ohms so these are all shot and they have to all be replaced. Uh, I think I do have these on hand so I just let my customer know that it's going to take a bit of more more time but yeah so on this other side all these other freaking caps have to be changed they're all bad uh, they all test high on the ESR meter so we're going to go ahead one by one and change them out and put some new caps on there very unfortunate unfortunately I'm going to test actually on the primary side I think this is what rated for 50 volts or something usually these ones are rated for like around 50 volts I'm going to check these ones too, just to make sure they're not bad. And uh, hopefully we can get this working again for our customer. Okay, so I'm in the middle of uh, changing out these caps, and uh, they do, they really are testing bad. So here's the groups of caps I've uh, I've done here on the table. So these were the original, let me see if I put these here. Yeah, here we go. So these are 100 microfarad, 16 volts. These are 220 at 25 volts, I think, yeah. And then these are the original 1500 at 10 volts. And they are all bad. Maybe one of these ones actually didn't test bad, but the rest are all bad. And on the SR meter, they're testing like 3-4 ohms a couple of each. So very, very bad. And the reason why also I know they're bad is because when I was testing the outputs, I did not film this, I think. Uh, my voltage started dropping on the... On uh, the... Um, on some of the uh, on the pins, so I think I was supposed to get like three point three two something, two point something, and they were all dropping. So I started thinking, uh, we have a couple more, or maybe I don't know how many, but it turns out they're all bad. So this is the result of uh, cheap component design. So they're all taken out. They're all there, like I showed you, and uh, we're gonna start by putting the one hundred microfarad ones in the new ones. Uh, so they're the little tiny ones here. So there's four of them, and then there's six uh, two twenty microfarad caps and uh, this side also i have to change because they are all testing bad so let's get on with it and uh when it's done i'll show you when it's uh yeah I'll, I'll come back when it's all done okay so we're back and uh this was not fun at all to do and i'll explain why quickly so this power supply i don't know what the heck went wrong but uh well, I can tell you there was a lot of faults, and every single fault that was on this power supply was with the electrolytic capacitors. Look at this mess of electrolytic capacitors that I had to change to get this to work now. So I, I, I'll let the cat out of the bag. It's working like it's supposed to now, and I'm going to show you with the meter some voltages I'm taking. And uh, basically before, the only thing I saw was 5 volt standby. I'm not sure if I recorded me testing all the pins, but... Basically, before, the only thing that was working was the 5-volt standby. And then I changed the three caps that were visually defective. And I tested again, and I saw I was missing my vo other voltages that I'm pretty certain I need on this. Um, and basically, uh, I had to change the ca all the caps on the primary side and all the caps on the secondary side. Every single one of them was defective. It's the first time that I see... A switch mode power supply that has all these defective caps in one go. Maybe one of them, actually, I'll take my word back. One of them, which was the 220 microfarad one, one of them was good. All the other ones were bad. And as you can see, I have one over here, 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 all done, uh, all done. 
um, basically, so this was all, this was all, uh, what's it called? Um, this was all replaced, and I'm going to show you now in the next clip here. I'm just going to flip this over, and I'm going to start measuring the uh, the pins on the, well, you know what, actually, I don't even think I have to flip uh, the board over, because I have this guy here, and I'm going to take my voltages off of, uh, let's see if I can do this live. I don't know if I can do this live. Let's see, we'll put this over here, we'll bend it over. Okay, there you go. So now this is just a reference. Let me show you on the meter what we're seeing here. Okay, so we have, I think this one, pin one is ground, so that's ground. Two is ground as well. Three is our 1.1 1 .1 volt supply. 2.3 Okay, let's see So I think it's working now Hmm Well for sure the caps were all done uh, they were uh, they were shot so I'm not uh, I'm not questioning that because my meter again I tested them and they all tested bad. Um, let me just flip this over one more time. I think it's my connections actually, they're, they're a bit flimsy, but now it's working like it's supposed to. So let me flip this over quickly. I'm just gonna check the voltages again. Okay, so basically we are seeing the same thing. So I'm just gonna measure here. This is ground. That is our five volts, I think. Oh, another supply. Our five volts, which is steady. Or the supply is not on, not on, not on, not on, not on. Okay, so, well, I know for a fact that these all tested bad because I put them on the meter. Um, so, uh, I know that for sure. I'm just going to check something on the primary side. I want to measure something on this side here. So, let me just check this out quick. Yeah, I believe this is actually a switch supply. So... The uh, pins over here are not active really until you turn on the power supply, so I just confirmed that. And also I checked the uh, main filter caps to see how much I was reading on the output, and I read 160 volts, so this is not running right now. It's actually currently turned off. Um, I believe it's turned off, so once it actually is running, we're going to see everything on the output. But basically, yeah, 5 volts is there. We replaced all the caps, and uh, the board is ready to be given back to the customer. So this is the mess that we we made unfortunately but uh, again they all tested bad so new caps are in and uh, hopefully the customer's radio will work now if you guys like this video please leave a thumbs up leave a bleep bloops comment down there below in the comment section hit the bell if you want to be uh, subscribed for uh, alerts for new videos when they're published and uh, hopefully I see you on the next one okay until then see you guys bye bye